trip in West Palm Beach and we're getting ready to take a look at the Tiana Vancouver 42 and Randy from David Walter Yachts is gonna show us the boat and yeah I think it'll be a little bit more suited for a family what do you think Randy? It's a very nice cruising boat for a family a lot of volume inside a lot of ability very safe vessel and has a wonderful reputation. Before jumping in, let's hear some advice from professional sailor and author John Kretschmer. So the 42 is actually one of those boats that you see in all the faraway places. It's definitely a world cruising boat. Last year when Taji and I traveled all throughout the South Pacific, we saw 42s essentially. We saw them in Tahiti, Tonga, New Caledonia. They're all over the place. They're capable world cruisers. One of the things about them, and, and this talks directly to you, Jordan, and your idea, which I couldn't agree with more, of getting a boat that's put together and doesn't need a ton of work, is a lot of 42s have been sailed hard. They are well-used boats. You could be looking at a refit. One of the things about used boats is you see a boat with all this gear on it, it looks so alluring on a listing sheet, but that can just translate into tons of problems if it's old used equipment. But anyway, what's great about the 42 is a super sea kindly hull shape. It's kind of that classic hull from the 70s and 80s. Long fin keel, skeg hung rudder, super protected prop, uh, punches all the right buttons. The things I like about it is it's a good sailing boat. It has a big rig. Um, Harris was kind of famous for his diamond stays, which are struts um, where the staysail stay hits the mast so you don't need running back stays. And runners are kind of the downside of cutters. And the diamond stays or diamond struts, you don't really require running back stays. And that's a big plus. I think if you can find a really clean Tiana 42, even if you have to spend more money, it would be a boat you guys would like, that you would grow into, that you could sail far and wide and in high latitudes and low latitudes. When I first stepped on board, I was almost overwhelmed by how big this boat felt, which was honestly a little intimidating, but exciting at the same time. When we went down below, I was blown away. The interior felt like a mansion. Everything was super open, spacious, and practical. No matter where I stood or sat, I felt like I had a lot of space around me. It is so easy to imagine raising a family on this boat. So this galley is freaking amazing. I don't even feel like I'm on a boat. I feel like I'm in an apartment or something. I've got all this prep area, got a fridge and a freezer. What's cool about the refrigerator is it actually opens up for access this way, which is really cool. Look at this. I know. <laughs> it's, it's so all, crazy. It's, it's all like the size floor. of a galley in like a small house. Yeah, and then on top of that, there's just so much storage space. I've got this, I've got this, I've got these little drawers, I've got all of this area, even under here. This mm -hmm. whole area is just full of storage, so I freaking love this galley. So on Atticus, whenever I was cooking, the only flat space we had to prep food was right over the sink. So I never had an area that was just for food prep with nothing else that I needed to get access to underneath it. So this is cool because it's just a counter space for food prep. And as for the monster six foot four headroom test, I mean, I'm blown away. I'm pretty much able to stand straight up at the sink all the way through the center line of the boat. Functionally, I have full headroom in this boat, which is a major plus for me. Yeah, so this is the aft cabin, and I would say this is definitely big enough to be our cabin, I would almost say, because the V-berth is a little bit more ideally situated for kids. And then the nice thing too is it's a full separate berth, so it's got its own door here, and it's got storage and ventilation. It's even got air conditioning, and there's a little control unit right here. Nice cool air coming out, so. Yeah, this would, this would be perfect for us. Seems like everywhere you go on this boat, there's either a porthole that you can open up 
or a hatch like within two feet from you. So the ventilation in the tropics seems like this boat would be pretty ideal. So if we're gonna be working full time and homeschooling potentially two little ones, this little area is snug, but also really big. And this table is pretty substantial and it also opens up this way. So you've got all this area to have have fun, to learn, and to host guests if we wanted to. But learning is fun. Learning is winning. Stay Le in school, kids. Go no beach, cool! Stay in school! Don't do drugs. <laughs> what would I do if someone offered me these drugs? I'd tell them to take a hike. The nav station is really big for me. I could definitely ergonomically sit here and work on the computer all day and be, be comfortable. Ergonomically? Ergonomic. I think it's ergonomic. Dude, learn English. <laughs> is ginormous and what's really cool about it is the toilet is separate from the shower so every time you shower you won't get uh, the head kind of all like moist and wet so yeah it's awesome lots of room in here I feel like we could fit like four people in here if we needed to and the storage space throughout the boat is just incredible there's these really beefy huge drawers which we could fit all of your tools or my sewing supplies um, and I don't have to like lift this up every time to get in there there's also some hidden storage back here, and then there's storage back here, and storage back here. It's like, everywhere you look, there's storage. And talk about an extra cabin for kids. This would be like the dream room for two kids. I mean, they each would have their own bunk or each berth, you know, so they're separate, but they still have a lot of space. And then they've got their own hatch right here, so you can pop your head out and peek on the neighbors or throw stuff at them. Lots of storage space. Kids love storage. Yeah, and it's huge. I mean, look at this. I mean, this could be our cabin, but I'd say the aft one would probably be ours. Yeah. Yeah. Just know. because this is so ideal for two kids, you know? Yeah, I mean? well, until they're born and yeah, we do got need a long to, like, way to go. <laughs> we need to like make them. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously here's the engine and I really like the accessibility. You can get all the way around the engine. The previous owner did a couple of neat things. Uh, first of all, put a new high output alternator on it, as well as she put this external oil filter location here so you can more easily change out the oil filter. Um, over there you've got the redundant Raycor fuel system um, that can also be swapped around in every which way so that you can actually pump fuel through the, the filters and kind of polish your fuel and put it back into the tanks. All in all, I really like this whole arrangement, the access and just the little improvements. Can you get in there? I think I can. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a go. That was the last time we saw him. <laughs> Well, I would definitely call this a crawl space, but it's a really nice crawl space <laughs> in that like I can definitely get to everything. So you've got the pre-filters for the Spectra water maker right there. Here's all the steering stuff, the steering cables, the rudder shaft right there, the air conditioning right there. I definitely appreciate this sort of thing. If you were to just spend a little bit of time removing some stuff, you could actually sit fairly comfortably in here and kind of work on some of the equipment. I'm gonna give this boat five out of five stars for livability. I think it's perfect for a family of four. There's a couple of things I really like about the cockpit. The first is this giant solar bimini, or I guess you call it a hardtop. It allows them to have a ton of solar. I think three 175 watt panels. The other thing is obviously it keeps you out of the sun, out of the rain while you're sailing and underway. And then it also makes this cockpit area into like a cage. I mean, you could have a big wave come and hit you and you've got so much to grab onto. If it were to be our boat, I would want to reinforce it with a couple of like, weld a couple of angles or gussets into it because the whole thing racks back and forth quite a bit. That's another thing is that I'd almost like to talk to like a naval engineer or a marine engineer or something because really large hardtop, I don't know how much that would affect the boat's sailing performance. 
if the windage would be a problem, if in a storm this would be a concern, right? Because this is this is huge. Assuming that it's you know okay for an offshore blue water boat, then I love it. It's definitely not aesthetically very pleasing, um, but whatever, man. Like I can stand over here. I'm out of the elements. I like it. The other really cool thing is it's got water catchment. We had water collection on Atticus, but we had to kind of set it up. It wasn't permanent. And so it'd be cool to just all day, all night, whenever it rains, you're able to collect water. And since we're gonna be having kids, you know, in the near future, we do need to be somewhat prepared to more or less single hand the boat while the other person is down below taking care of the kids. You can reach all of the winches from the helm and also, all of the lines needed to reef the main are led aft into the cockpit onto the cabin top. I don't know how well it will work in the real world because it's all single line reefing on the main. And I've heard mixed reviews about that. Um, there's a lot of friction in that system. So if it worked, that would be amazing. And finally about the cockpit, the Tiana 42 is a canoe stern, just like the Pacific Seacraft 37. And what that means is that we're gonna have less room in the cockpit for the size of the boat because it comes to a point here where more modern boats, the stern would kind of carry out wide in the stern and make for a just a much larger cockpit, much larger living area. One thing I love, especially with boats of this size, is I think they call these granny bars. I'm not sure, but these things that you can lean against while you're reefing or dealing with lines and halyards and everything, it just makes me feel so much safer. Because I feel like this right here, it's probably the second most dangerous thing you do on a cruising boat is having to come up to the mast. The first most dangerous is going up on the foredeck. But with a cutter rig with two furled sails, then hopefully we wouldn't really have to go up on the foredeck very much offshore at all. Also, the stay sail is self-tacking, which is really cool. I like that a lot. The whisker pole is mounted on a track that goes up and down the mast. Um, so it's just ready and easy to use. That's cool. I've become a much lazier sailor since we've started cruising the Caribbean. And so things like stack packs are just a must for me to be able to just drop the main and then have it be fairly sun protected, not have to mess around with sail covers. Mm -hmm. We could throw a kid in there too. Yeah, that's right. Time out. And the Traveler here, you can see it's made out of laminated pieces of wood. Ideally for, for a boat that we want to take around the world, I'd like to see zero wood on deck. To see things like handrails that are really pretty, okay, that's fine, but to see stuff like this, I'd, I'd really rather that not be wood. So all in all, I really like the cutter rig with twin furlers, no bowsprit, and the diamond struts. And I also really like the hardtop. I'm not that into the canoe stern or the wood traveler, and I'm on the fence about single line reefing. So for sailability, I'm going to give this boat four out of five stars. First of all, I'll start by saying I really do like the underbody of the Tiana 42, but there's a couple of things that make it less than perfect for us. The sail area to displacement ratio is really low. Now, I did find a couple conflicting numbers for this online, so I'm not entirely sure what to believe, but it does appear like the boat doesn't have the best light air performance. And that's gonna be because the boat is very heavy. But whatever you sacrifice with light air performance, you really gain back with a super high comfort ratio, just meaning that the boat should be very, very comfortable when offshore. And finally, it has a fin keel, but it is a very long fin keel which is less than ideal for us because it's gonna represent more wetted surface area, which means that the boat is gonna be harder to push. So in light winds, it won't sail as well. And also the long fin keel is gonna have a less than optimal foil shape, which means that it's not gonna sail to windward as well. So although the boat might not perform ideally in light winds or when sailing to windward, it does appear that the boat would be extremely comfortable offshore. And when there is enough wind, it seems like it would sail really well and for that reason I'm gonna give it four out of five stars on design. As for category four which was going to be the overall condition of the boat 
um, we've decided that we're not going to dive into the particulars and specifics of the condition of each boat that we see because all the boats that we're looking at are used and we're only on these boats for a couple of hours and based on our personal experience we're not qualified surveyors or professional boat buyers. So we really don't want our opinion of these boats to affect their sellability if we don't end up buying them. Now, the condition of these boats is going to be a huge factor in our boat buying and choosing process. And so we are definitely going to be cultivating concepts of our own and opinions of our own, discussing them behind the scenes. We will be giving a very general concept in the videos of how we think about the boat's condition. But again, going into details and potentially affecting the boat's sellability with our amateur opinions is not at all what we want to do with this boat series. So because of that, we're going to be doing away with category four and move on to having a chat with our broker. Most Tiana 42s that you're going to see are 25 years old and they've gone everywhere but they have major problems with compression posts and tankage and decks and chain plates and basically the same build goes through the whole line of Tiana boats. The problem with the Tiana 42 is the tanks sit very close to the bilge. They did not perfect the wells on the fuel tanks. A lot of them were black iron, stainless. As everybody knows, aluminum should be for fuel, stainless for water. Black iron is really bad for anything, but that's how they did it. Black iron was always for fuel. If you're looking at a Tiana 42 that's 20, 25 years old, you're gonna to have to start thinking about replacing the tanks. They built the furniture around all the systems on those boats. So my advice is to try to get the best boat for the money, but don't buy an old boat and buy a boat that you can actually maintain and fix because if you go to buy a boat for 150 grand, that's 25 years old, you got a pile full of projects coming up in the next few years. So uh, that's the scoop. Wow, that was a really cool boat. As soon as we went down there, I could almost see like Jordan at the settee playing with a kid the little kid in the other corner of the room in a little crib. These are kids that we are going to have in the future. They're this isn't like a kidnapping sort of a scenario. They're it rubs the lotion on its skin. They're gonna be our kids though, yeah. not someone else's. Yeah, I mean, we could consider. It rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. Then yeah. I don't have to go through the whole process of popping them out. Yeah. Ah! Anyway, <laughs> I could definitely see a family of four really functioning and thriving in that boat. It was really awesome. So I'm gonna say it definitely checks our box for priority number one for Atticus 2, which is a great boat for a family of four over the next 10 years. Yeah, and then I think it does a really good job with priority number three as well, which is a boat that prioritizes comfort at sea rather than comfort at anchor. And I think that this boat would be really, really comfortable offshore. I think it would make passage making a lot more fun. I think we would go on a lot more passages because of that. Now, unfortunately, the boat did not do so well with our second priority, which is that we wanna spend more time sailing and less time working on the boat. For the right person, I think this boat would be a great choice. But for us, in our stage of life, in our stage of our journey, that's just not what we're looking for. But ideally, Atticus 2 will be a lot like that Tiana 42, but just in better condition. So the road trip continues. <laughs> Let's go. Yep, so we're gonna hop in our car and head over to New Bern, North Carolina to check out a Caliber 40 LRC. So hope to see you next week. See you guys. Mm -hmm.